tonight we're going to look at two things. We're going to look at uh, linearization, not linearity property from triple E, but linearization. After that, we're also going to look at we're also going to look at uh, tangents and normals. Okay, so we're going to look at these two properties. Now, what is happening here? Well, let's look at the first part. For linearization, it's actually something that is very, very straightforward. It's just a, an equation that you have to that you have to understand. So, but before we look at what, perhaps let me let me state the equation for us, and then we're going to see um, what it means and how to actually use it. So for you to linearize a function, it's linear equivalence at a certain point, let's say at a point A. What the function will be at that point A will be equals to the evaluation of that function at that particular point A, then plus the derivative of the function at A, then multiplying x okay let me just see someone else trying to join us so yeah so we're trying to come first write down the expression for a linearization which is um the evaluation of uh, the function at that specific point then plus the derivative or the gradient of the function at that specific point we know the derivative of a function gives us its gradient so as I'm saying the gradient here, which is at the derivative of that function um, at that particular uh, that particular point A. And then we have to multiply this by x minus A. But this of course is for a function f of x. Let's say we wanted to linearize a function f of x. Then this is the expression that we will use. Now the question is, what does this expression actually imply? What does it mean? Um, what is this whole thing about linearization? Well, to linearize, as you guys can predict from the term, it's to make something close to being straight, if I would call it that, or to make something being linear. Now, most of the functions that we're going to see here are nonlinear functions. Like if I give you an example of f of x is equals to let's say lean x. When you look at a function like this one, we know to say this function is not a linear function. In fact, if you try to sketch it, what you see is that that function, or that's for the exponent, that function will, will go something like this. So we expect that the function uh, f of x is equal to lean x is going to look closer to something like this. Now, as you can see, it's not a linear function. But what we want to approximate is it's um, how linear it can be at a, at a certain point. We want to approximate it to be linear at a specific point. So we're trying to linearize the function at a given point. Now, how does it work? Well, let's we can actually even use this example. So I actually have it right here where the question is saying, um, let's put it here. So in this question, I hope that is that is visible. So we're saying find the linearization Lx of the function at a given x is equals to a. So the function here is f of x is equals to lean x. And we are looking at this at x is equals to one. So here our a, our a is going to we're going to deal with um we're going to deal with the one there. So what happens here? Well, the first thing is we have to we we have to in we have to differentiate. First, remember the function we said the linearization, the linearization at that point will be equal to f at that point, f of a, then plus the gradient, which is the gradient at that particular point, then multiplying x minus a. 
So when you look at this function, our a here is one. So our a is equals to one. So what we want to find is f of one. So f of a, remember the first thing is f of a. So let's start by first finding what f of a is. In this case, that is f of one. So f of one here is going to be the function and our function is lean x. So when x is one, this is just lean one. Now, the natural log of one, we know to say this has to be zero. So the first part, f of a, we have found that's a zero. So lean one is zero. So f of a is zero. The next thing that we want to find is f prime of a. But before we, we first go to f prime of a, let's just find f prime of x, which is just the derivative of, um, of that function f of x. And the function is lean x. We know how to differentiate a log function. So if I'm going to differentiate this, we know to say the derivative will be one over x, one over the argument, then multiplying the derivative of the argument, which is a one in this case. So here we just get one over x as the derivative. So in other words, f prime of x is equals to one over x. That's the derivative of our function. But since we want f prime of a and our a is one, so we want f prime of one, where there's x, we'll put one. So you have one over one, which just becomes equals to one. So look at this. We have f of a, which is f of one. Let me say f of a, we found zero. Then we have f prime of a, and instead of a, you can also just write one there, that's also okay. So f prime of a, we have just found it's one. The only thing left here is x minus a. x minus a becomes equals to what? Again, a is one. So x minus a becomes x minus one. So what does this imply? Our linearization here, which was equals to f of a plus f prime of a multiplying x minus one minus a, I mean, becomes equal to zero plus f prime of x, f prime of x, we found f prime of a, we found a one there, then x minus a, and our a again is one. So we get this. So therefore our linearization will be equals to x minus one. So this is, this is how it works. Now, maybe you might think this question was a little bit too straightforward and so on. Well, it's the same concept even for other weird questions. Like for example, um, there's this one I'm looking at, um, let's say find the linearization of, and then we're given a function. They're not saying it's f of x, but they're just saying the function is root four minus x. So here, this is a new example. Uh, the first one ends right there. Any questions on the first one before we proceed? Okay, looks like there are no questions on the first one. So in the second example here, it's the same thing. Find the linearization. Find the linearization. So, and notice that in all these questions, they specify at one point. So the linearization of this function, and they're saying at x is equals to zero. So since in this case, we're looking for f is, f, x is equals to zero, it's the same thing. We start with the definition of what linearization is. Once you have the definition of what linearization is, it's now a matter of just finding the missing pieces. First, you have to observe that your x, your a here is going to be zero since x is giving us, um, x is equals to zero. So your a is equals to zero. Once you have seen that, it's now just finding the missing pieces. So first, we want to find f of zero. f of zero, this is f of a. So when it comes to f of zero, in the function root 4x minus 
uh, root four minus X, where there's X, we're going to put zero since um, here A is equals to X. So this is a zero here, so that we end up with root four. And root four gives us two. So we've seen that, that part for F of A, which is F of zero, gives us a two. So the first part is done. Next up, we need F prime of A. So perhaps this is the tricky part, getting that derivative. So F of X again is equals to this function. Now we just need its derivative. We know our F of X can be written as uh, four minus X to the power one over two. Now we can differentiate so that F prime of X will be equals to one over two. Then we'll have four minus X less the power by one. So the power is one over two, less it by one becomes one over two minus one, which is minus one over two. Then multiply it by the derivative of the inside. The inside is four minus X. The derivative of four is zero. The derivative of X is minus one. So we just get a minus one here. What does this mean when we try to write this down? This can be written as uh, one over two, then the square root of four minus X. I've just taken the, 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 this root in the denominator because of that minus there, but it has to multiply negative one. So this would be negative one over two, and then we have root four minus X. So this is our F prime of X. But remember, we're not looking for F prime of X, we're looking for F prime of A, and our A here is equals to zero. So since our A is equals to zero, we can now say F prime of zero will be equals to where this X puts zero. This becomes minus one over, we have two here, then we have four minus zero. So that this becomes minus one over two, multiplying root four. And root four is two again, so that we end up with minus one over four, two multiplying the two coming from the square root. So we end up with this as F prime of zero. Having found this, the last part is now to just get X minus A. And again, since our A is zero, this is just going to be equals to X minus zero, which is just X. We can then get back our linearization um, definition and plug them in. So in this case, what we see is our F of A, remember what our F of A was, for F of A, we found, where is that? F of A, we found a two there. So F of A, we found two. So we'll come back to this, where this F of A, we'll put two. Then plus F prime of A. And F prime of A, this is the one we just found as a minus one over four. So this becomes plus minus one over four. The last part is this one here x minus a and for x minus a remember that just came out as x so this will be multiplying x so that the final answer becomes 2 minus 1 over 4x so this becomes the linearization Okay, so I hope this demonstrates linearization and everything that you need to know about it. If you guys have more interesting questions on linearization, you can share them in the group and I'll be happy to look at them between now and when we meet next for math. But in the meantime, let's look at tangents and normals. Any questions before we move on? Yeah. 